What's up, fellas? So right here, I wanted to uh, show y'all what I eat for throughout the day. So right here, I, I eat about 460 grams of egg whites, which is approximately 50 grams of protein. All right. And the reason why I'm showing y'all this guy, because I wanted to run my mouth a little bit. Uh, so y'all was forced to hear me talk. But basically what I'm doing is I put Pam on the uh, pan. I spray it with Pam and I put the heat on low. And um, I only only kind of salt I use in this is accent, accent low sodium salt. And I, I normally would cut onion up in this, but I didn't have no onion this morning. So I had to just eat it without the onion. But that's the salt I season it with right there. And the reason I eat egg whites, guys, is because obviously the fat is taken out. Most of the fat is in the yolk. Okay. So I don't um, want fat. Right now, my macros are approximately 220, 220 grams of protein. I'm sorry guys, 200 grams of protein, 325 grams of carbs, and 75 grams of fat for right now. So that's what I'm eating right now. And that will go down on the 1st of April. Okay? Um, and I'm going to tell y'all a little bit of how I diet and what's my planning for the year. So I post to start at dieting in January. But as a lot of you guys know, my YouTube and all that stuff um, started taking off and I had coaching sessions out the ass so I couldn't I didn't have time to cook my meals because the only way I can diet is I have to prepare my meals with me I can't eat out on the go even if it's so called healthy like say Subway or Chipotle or something like that that shit don't work for me for me to lose weight I have to weigh my food I have to weigh every gram of food because I tend to overeat if I try to eyeball my food. So I have to cook every meal. So I did a book. Um, a slight book. Uh, only like a five or six month book. Like say six months slight book. Uh, all the way up to January. And I wanted to start a Jan uh, started cutting January. But I didn't get a chance to. Thanks to YouTube. To, uh, becoming very busy in my life. So now I'm making this a priority. I started dieting about two weeks ago. Right around the 1st of March. And right now I'm at my fattest. Uh, right now I'm about 235 to 240. Um, so I want to diet down to about 215, 210 to 215. So let's hypothetically say 210. I want to diet down to 210. So right now, by my standards, I'm fat as shit. All right. And so I want to get that down. I did a slight little bulk. So now I'm cutting my calories. Now how I do it is I do a different approach than most people do it. Um, I just start doing my, um, every month I lower my calories. So on the first of each month, so on the first of April, I will lower my calories. So right now I don't count my calories. I just count macros. So right now, like I said, it's 200 grams of protein, 325 grams of carbs and 75 grams of fat. Next month I, I will go down to 200 grams of carbs will stay the same. My fats will drop down to 65 and my carbs will drop down to 275. All right. Now, I, I would not take my fats down no lower than that. That's as low as I'm going to take my fats. I'm not going to take my fats no lower than 65. So the only thing that goes down from there would be my carbohydrates and my uh, my cardio. With I, Right now, I'm only doing 10 minutes of cardio. So as next month, I'll take it up to 15 minutes of cardio and I'll drop my carbs and fat. After that, after that, the next month after that in May, the only thing I drop down after that is my carbs and my um up my cardio. Okay, so with dieting, guys, you don't want to um cut down the volume of food. You want to you want to start going to you want to get more bang for your buck. So as the months go go on, I don't eat less food. I just eat foods that are less in carbohydrates. So I start eating more vegetables and things like that and less starchy carbs like rice and potatoes and oatmeal. All right, because I don't want to be hungry. 
so I I go to eating more vegetables. So like right now I'm able to eat 160 grams of oatmeal with 160 grams of blueberries. All right, and I'll probably be able to do that next month, but the following month I would have to cut that down and make more of an omelet. Same for my lunch. Right now I'm able to eat a lot of rice. But in the following months, in the coming up months, I'm going to have to eat less starchy carbs and go to a more of a fibrous diet. Less rice and more veggies. All right. So I don't want to eat less volume of food. I just want to eat carb uh, foods that carry less carbs. All right. So I'm really just cutting down the energy. I want to cut down the energy, not the volume of food, because then you're just going to be hungry. All right. So that was the whole reason why I showed y'all this while I was cooking the eggs. I just wanted to run my fucking mouth to explain everything. Uh, Cause I could have edited this out, but I wanted to run my fucking mouth. So this is my breakfast. I also put, right now I'm able to allow to get uh, five grams, I mean two slices of cheese to fit into my macros because it makes it taste better and it gives me my fat. All right, as my fat come down, that's gonna come down. So maybe next month I go to one slice of cheese. I hadn't figured out what I want to cut out or do yet, you know. Um, I want to try to keep my food as flavorable as possible, and fat allows that. So I haven't figured out where I want to cut my carbs and foods from yet, but something's gonna have to get cut, all right? So as the months go on, yes, you lose a little flavor in your food, but it shouldn't be that much. You never want your foods to be uh, fucking disgusting. And here's my oatmeal. I got 160 grams of whole oats with 160 grams of blueberries in there. And that'll be my carbs before my workout. All right. So now I'm headed to the gym. So I wanted to explain to you guys about um, what I got going on here. So for the past 15, 20 years, say 20 years I've been working out. I've never foam rolled. I've never stretched. All right. So when I, me doing this channel here, me doing this fitness channel here, I train my clients like this, but I always want to be a big, like lift as much weight as possible. And coincidentally, it has taken a toll on my body. So, you know, I have knee pain, shoulder pains and stuff like that. So now, you know, thanks, thanks to this YouTube, one thing, let me tell you guys something. If you guys want to be successful in YouTube, the number one thing with anything in life you do as a business, the one thing you want to do is you want to stand out and you want to be different. You don't want to be like everybody else. Now, if anybody, any of you guys have followed YouTube, you know yourself that it's hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels on here that are bodybuilding channels, all right? It's only maybe a handful of channels that are really functional channels and none of them that's really popular. What I mean by popular, none of them that have any personality. Um, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to be the first functional channel that uh, had a lot of personality in it. All right. So what I want you guys to do is watch me and watch my mobile ass um, train this year. And become more mobile. I have no fucking mobility. I have the mobility of a fucking turtle. Alright. And so what I want you guys to know. Watching me is. This is what happens when you don't take your mobility serious. Alright. I have trigger points all over my body. But it has never been a priority to me. My priority has always been. Lifting the most weight. So coming into this year. I want to take a different approach. I want to be more mobile. And it's also going to help my YouTube channel too because just going doing a bunch of bench presses and dumb curls, man, it's, you got the Hodge, ten, Hodge Twins, you got Chris Jones. I don't really think the Hodge Twins really work out no more. They just eat in a fucking car, eating fast food in a fucking car. But, you know, you got Chris Jones, you got all Mark Lowbound, you got all these channels. That shit has been played out. And, you know, a lot of those channels, you know, they're not as popular as they used to be. The reason why they're not as popular as they used to be because that shit has been played. So I'd be a fool to start a fitness channel to come on and do the same shit that these guys been doing for years. So what my approach is I'm going to do mobility and a lot of functional training. All right. Now you just saw me do my piriformis. You just saw me do my hamstring and calves. Uh, 
And so now I'm finna do my hip flexor. And my hip flexors are tight as shit. Alright? And you're gonna see in a minute when I get ready to do my reverse lunges, just how fucking tight my hip flexors is. I can barely reverse lunge. Okay? So you want guys, you gotta make that a priority uh to make sure that you're working on your mobility. Each side you wanna do, you know preferably at least 30 to 60 seconds okay you want to do at least 30 seconds i'm gonna move it a little faster because i'm on the camera and i don't want to fucking be y'all watching me phone roll these hip flexor for a fucking minute and a half but you get the point all right and you can get those hoodies at that hoodie right there at alpha male training.com all right i mean the t-shirts i don't have the hoodies just the t-shirts and also if you want training or a program nutritional program or a workout program you can hit me at alpha male training.com also i right, now i'm finna do the groin the groin muscles all right all everything in my hips tight i never phone roll i never do none of this i never stretch i never do none of this i make my clients do it because that's what they want the people i train Now, guys, um, as you see me, you always want to do all of your phone rolls first. What we call your self mild fascia release. All you're doing when you do phone rolling is your release, releasing trigger points. Basically, you're giving yourself a massage with the phone roll. All right. Now I'm doing hip flexor stretch. I got like the world's tightest hip flexors. Um, so this is something I should have been doing, but I just been neglecting it. And a lot of guys that y'all look up to, they just as tight as me. So guys, what I want what, what I want my channel to be about is getting healthy. Uh I'm I'm right now, I've been more in my life, like a lot of guys, I've been more into aesthetics and not fitness. Alright, so starting this channel here, I want this channel to be more about fitness. I'm about the most unstructurally sound person you know, all right? You know, if you're a guy and you just care about big arms, big chest, and, and, and a tight waistline, then you probably need to follow my channel because that means that you're probably not fit. You're probably aesthetic, but you're not fit. And what's going to end up happening is when you get to my age, when you get to 39, I'll be 39 this year, once you get around that age, all that neglecting, all that uh, scratching and phone rolling that you neglected is going to start to catch up with you. And it's then started to catch up with me. As y'all guys going to see how tight my hip flexors are when I get ready to um, to do my reverse lunges. I can barely go down, especially with my left leg. My left leg, my left hip flexor is so tight that I can hardly reverse lunge. And the morning after I do lunges, especially in my left knee, it's extremely uh inflamed and that's because the hip flexor uh attaches to has an uh 
a ligament that's t a tendon that attaches to the patella and what ends up happening is when your hip flex is too tight what ends up happening is it drives that patella into your knee causing friction which means that next day your knees are going to be inflamed all right that happens to me a lot it's been happening to me for years and i just been neglecting it all right i've been neglecting a lot of stuff with my body i've just been caring about lifting a lot of weights and you know that's it so now this year i want to take a different approach i want to come with more of an aesthetic approach instead of uh just aesthetics i want to come more with fitness i want to be more fit this year fitness is mobility flexibility and all that guys not just aesthetics all right that means that you have the mobility and flexibility go along with it endurance all that type of stuff all that is fitness not just being eight percent body fat so as i start my diet this whole channel i want y'all to see as i go on my journey about I want to lose 25 pounds starting my diet and I want to increase my more mobility and flexibility. As you're going to see when I do my piriformis stretch right here, look how tight my piriformis is. All right. So this should give you some indication. I should be able to pull my leg closer to my chest than that, but my piriformis is so tight that I can't. All right. So what, what I'm doing right there is I'm pushing out on my knee and I'm pulling my foot in, all right, which is stretching my piriformis, which is externally, uh, externally pushing on my piriformis. Piriformis is below your glutes, guys, all right, below your glutes. And if your piriformis gets tight, you'll, you have a tendency to su suffer from sciatica, all right, because the sciatic nerve runs underneath the piriformis in most people in some people it runs on top and some people it runs uh through but for the most part like the large percentage of people it runs underneath the piriformis and if that piriformis gets too tight it's gonna start pinching down on that sciatic nerve cutting off sensation to your legs and you see a lot of older people had it they that's the number one reason they got that piriformis that got so tight on them over the years that it's starting to pinch down on their legs pinch down on their nerve all right so you want to make sure and piriformis is so serious it's got a syndrome so you can actually have what they call piriformis syndrome piriformis syndrome is simply when your piriformis is so tight it's cutting off circulation to your lower extremities all right right now i'm doing a dynamic warm-up which is my leg swings all right never done them before first time doing them I have all my clients do all this stuff because they care about um, fitness. They don't care about aesthetics. They just care about fitness. They just want to feel better. Shame on me. I always have cared about aesthetics. That means just looking good. You know, I didn't care if my, I had any hip mobility or nothing. So I'm accepting this challenge and starting this channel to increase my mobility. A lot of guys y'all see start fitness channels. They want to lose weight or, you know, all this type of stuff. Now, well, I'm losing weight with mine, but I already, you know, have no problem losing weight. I already know how to diet down. My thing is I want to have more mobility. I want to, it's a, I know every ex functional exercise in the book. I have my clients do them, but I don't do them. So now I'm going to do them. All right. Just never been my goals, guys. Just never been my goals. If you're somebody who want to run a hundred meter, uh, the hundred yard dash, you're probably not going to be good in the marathon. And same vice versa. If you're somebody who run a marathon, you're probably not going to be good in 100 yard dash. So it's just what your goals, Spe specific adaptation and deposed demand. That means that your body adapts to what you do to it. So that means that if you train for something, your body will adapt to it. I haven't uh, trained my body for function. I have just trained my body for aesthetics. All right. So for to get aesthetics. You're going to be doing a lot of isolation moves and stuff like that. To get function, you're going to be doing a lot more full body movements. Okay? So, as function go, to get the body to work better as a unit, 
you have to work the body as a whole, as a unit. So as I start right here, I'm starting light because like I said, I never done none of this stuff before. I always had my clients do it. So you see I'm starting light, like a 20 pound kettlebell right there. And what I'm finna do is I'm finna do some kettlebell swings um, with uh, to a reverse lunge. Kettlebell swing to snatch to reverse lunge. Notice the um, notice the um, instability that comes from not functionally core. My core is not properly strong. So if you see me leaning and wobbling, that's where it comes from. That comes from my core is not perfectly strong. So what that means? That means if you're a guy and you can do a hundred sit-ups, but if you do a lot of things that challenge your core structurally, that means you're a fail. So, yeah, if you put me and say, hey, go do 100 sit-ups, yeah, I can do that. But then if you put one kettlebell in my hand and say, okay, now reverse lunge, working my body uh, contralaterally, my core suffers because I'm working it more functionally and not isolation. When you do sit-ups, you're working your body in isolation. Brett Dell, that was a full body core movement. I was working my core contralaterally. All right. So I'm do the other side. Now look how tight my left hip flex is. You see that range of motion right there? That's as low as I can get. That's that's where I run out of um, length in my hip flexor right there. I can't go any lower. That's how tight my hip flex is. So what I want to do is I want to improve that. Now, for you guys saying, well, how have you been lunging? Well, what I would do is I would do walking lunges. And when you do walking lunges, your biomechanics change and your body can compensate to make up for that lack of uh, mo range of motion right there. So when you, if I was to go do walking lunges right now, I could go down farther than that. But since I'm doing reverse lunges, that range of motion really shows into play right there. All right. So any of you guys who do regular functional uh, I mean, regular isolation, bodybuilder type, type workouts, and you decide, hey, I'm going to go do this while Alpha doing, just beware that you need to start very light, all right? I don't care I, I don't care if you could bench press 500 pounds. If you come doing this right here, you're going to have to start very light because you're going to find out real, real quick that your body is not structurally sound as it needs to be, all right? So this right here is not about strength. This right here is about getting your body to work uh It in years because of my lower back but most of that lower back issue has been coming from the mobility hip mobility uh, but instead of fixing it I took the lazy way out and <laughs> would just do leg press well like I said part of this vlogging series I want to rebuild my body structurally sound so that's part of this what I want to do with this because uh, I want to get back to swatting but I've been neglecting that for years. I just been doing leg press. I haven't did squat in years because of um, back pain and things like that. So I'm gonna fix that this year. A lot of that, most of that's gonna come from lack of hip mobility. So fixing my hip mobility will fix a lot of that. Uh, and this is did like three sets of three or four sets of um, calves. So that is the goal this year. Um, is to build up my lower body 
I've been neglecting my lower body a lot the last few years because of my back pain and things like that. I've been doing just enough to stay alive, so to speak. But this year here, I want to build it back up. So I'm going to start doing my phone rolls and scratches. So that would be a nice little journey this year with the channel to see that. All right, this is what I had for lunch. Had 300 grams of fish, 120 grams of brown rice, and 200 grams of mixed vegetables. Um, and I had, I grilled the tilapia. I seasoned it with garlic salt, accent, obviously, and uh, Miss Dash. Miss Dash right there. And so uh, those are the three seasonings I use. Just I use a little each. That is the tilapia right there. 300 grams of tilapia with one tablespoon of canola oil. One tablespoon of canola oil on low heat. I, well, I say medium heat. Let's just say medium heat. Grilling it. One tablespoon with 300 grams of tilapia. You can use chicken breast or whatever you want to use. But that's how I do it. I grill it on tilapia. Make sure you add that into your macros. All right. Make sure you add that into your macros. That's about approximately 60 to 65 grams of protein. I say 60. I add it up at 60. Um, and that's my rice and my vegetable. Just add your macros. If you don't know how to do your macros, I do coaching, nutritional coaching um, for this type of stuff. So like I said, y'all seen me on this video, I was, I'm was i fat as hell right now. And that's why you got to always have your swag. Because if you want to build muscle, you can't build muscle without gaining some weight. All right? So if you want to build some muscle, you got to gain some weight. You ain't got to get obese. But you're going to have to probably put on about 30 pounds maybe. If you want to put 20 to 30 pounds to put on some muscle. So you don't want to get super fat because you got to lose that shit. But you, wanna, you got to put on like 20 or 30 pounds. So right now I'm not looking my best, but I'll be lean by somewhere about july the 4th maybe and maybe it'll take me another month after that to get my body all the way where i want it to be which is about 210 lean and ripped but by the 4th of july i'll probably be i'll be looking good at about 217 216 uh by july and then maybe it'll take me another month to get all the way down to what i want to do get down to all right guys so if you have any problems um uh, like i said you can reach me at alphamaletraining.com uh, I can help you with this type of stuff uh, so this year if you if you somebody who been doing aesthetic training and you want to do some fitness training you could go on a journey with me because that's what I'm doing this year I want to be more fit and I'm not worried about aesthetics as much this year alright guys like comment subscribe holler back